Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. Take a look here. Is this the killer? Detroit police released brand new video of who they think killed police sergeant Colin Rose. Ben? Kim, we didn't even get the worst of the snow across the state today, but plenty of headaches to go around. So what are we going to do when the real stuff shows up on Sunday? All right, Ben. But we're going to begin with breaking news we've been following all day from Livingston County. It, too, is weather related. In an update a short time ago, in fact, police say it was the weather that caused this 40 car pileup. 40 cars on I-96 and three people are dead. Glad you're with us tonight at 5. Right now, westbound I-96 still closed from M59 to M52 as crews get in to try and clean up this enormous mess. It is a mess indeed. Let's get right to our Jason Colthorpe live where it all happened. Jason, looks like crews still have a ways to go out there. They have a lot to do, Kim. Let me just first tell you, we're standing on the Ingham County, Livingston County line. And if you look behind me, clearly westbound uh, still closed, but eastbound back open at this hour. And it's closed because as I spin you around, this is that he heavy metal mess you're referring to. This is how much still has to be done. And as you look at this, uh, it's hard to see with all the flashing lights as it gets darker, but there are semis. There are dozens of cars throughout there that all need to be hauled out after the crash investigation has finished now. And with all of that, police telling me they think this highway might be back open in the next hour. It had been lightly snowing this morning when suddenly a burst of whiteout conditions hit in Livingston County near the Ingham County line. The visibility in front of me was I was lucky enough that I could see the taillights in front of a semi and I'm doing four, about 40, 45 and the semi in front of me, I could barely see his headlights. At 947, cars and semis started sliding and crashing. And I had uh, trucks passing me at like 55, 60 miles an hour. And I mean, you just couldn't see. It was just kicking up that bad. Near the front, two passenger cars were crushed between three semis. Police say three people in two of these vehicles died at the scene. It was very chaotic for them to be able to get to to the uh, to all of the victims to be able to assess the situation. So there's some were trapped in just because of mechanical things with their cars. And you can imagine when you see some of those shots of how those cars were tied up, you can imagine the chaos that as first responders were talking about. And as you get a look at the current situation, the backup on eastbound that is now back open, this is kind of what caused other accidents this morning because the eastbound side was shut down. There were some accidents on that side, but mostly it was shut down simply because emergency vehicles had no way to get to this side of the highway because it was so bunched up at six o'clock. We're going to give you a closer look at that area and why a guardrail, oddly enough, may have hindered them. We should also mention 11 people were taken to the hospital in this crash with non life threatening injuries. In Livingston County, Jason Coulter, Local 4. Well, Jason, I know it's, uh, it can be very difficult to untangle exactly how it all started, uh, where the first car you know, caused the problem or the second car. Uh, do they, have they mentioned anything about how they believe this uh, began? They really have a lot to sort out, and I, and I tried to ask that without saying, you know, obviously conditions played a part, yeah. but I, even they kind of backed off that. They said, you know, it's likely conditions, but they don't know if this was just an accident uh, that was caused by one car or one semi, but clearly it caused a huge mess, and that's uh, something in the investigation it may never show, Devin. Yeah. All right, more coming up in this next 90 minutes of news. All right, Jason. Meanwhile, a Lapeer County Sheriff is in the hospital today, also after a multi-car accident. Police say Lapeer County Sheriff Ron Caliquin was driving on Davison Road when another car crossed the center line and struck his vehicle. The sheriff was taken to the hospital, although the extent of his injuries are unknown at this time. The other driver was killed in the crash. Today, snow has made a real mess out there on the roads all across Metro Detroit, just in time for the evening rush hour. Kim DiGiulio in tonight uh, with a look at the trouble spots right now, Kim. Yes, and now we're looking at our maps right now. You can see a lot of red on our maps, but the good news is that there's not many accidents you need to worry about, but cars just traveling really slow right now. The biggest problem that we were seeing earlier is northbound I-75. That was closed down. It is now back open right at Schaefer, but still take a look at these delays. They're pretty bad. So in the meantime, if you want to use four 
Short Street instead of this. Let's take a look at what it really looks like. Take a look at these cars here. Very slow moving traffic. These cars actually were at a standstill earlier. Looks like they're getting by very slowly. Here's a look at another shot of I-75. This is I-75 and 14 mile. You can see the camera's a little shaky there, which means it is pretty windy out there again, but this is not a, because of accidents. It's because cars are traveling slowly because of these weather conditions. Now, Ben, how are those weather conditions right now? Well, you know, Kim, it hasn't been a ton of snow out there. We've just seen a couple snow squalls in a, a few locations. It's lightened up considerably from what we were dealing with earlier, but everything right now looks to be for the most part south of eight mile and a lot of this stuff is light. But as you can tell from earlier today, it is not going to take a whole lot to cause some uh, reduced uh, problems on the roads uh, this afternoon and evening. So as these snow showers continue to move out, uh, we're watching around the city of Detroit. Still st uh, plenty of those snow showers falling. We've got another push, kind of a trough of low pressure coming in out of the north. And so some of these bands that are a little bit heavier coming off of Lake Michigan on the north end may still hold together as they move to the south. Uh, but we're still sort of watching that with anticipation. If we see a renewed push of snow, it's likely going to be around 8 o'clock tonight. Current temperatures mid 20s. So everything that's out there, especially those untreated roads, not going to get any better overnight. And of course, we've got a lot more snow to come this weekend. More on that in your four zone forecast coming up, guys. All right, Ben, now let's move on to a developing story. Uh, as you take a good look at this video from Detroit police, they say the man that you see there could be could be responsible for the murder of Wayne State Police Sergeant Colin Rose. The release of this new video comes uh, less than 24 hours since the charges were dropped against the first suspect who was arrested in the case. And since then, there have been several new clues in the renewed search for his killer. Let's bring in Sean Lay right now. And Sean, police said their investigation never went cold even after that first suspect was cleared. And Kimberly, that's something we've been talking about here on Local 4. The police continue to investigate this, leading them in new directions, new evidence, and now they're searching for a new suspect here. Here we are at the scene of the crime. We just got an update from police asking them if they've made any arrests. So far, no. So they do want you to take a look at some video that they gave us today of the person they believe shot Colin Rose. Police tonight are confident that this is the killer of Wayne State Police Sergeant Colin Rose. He's seen riding a bike up and down a street in a neighborhood behind Motor City Casino. The video was taken 10 minutes prior to Sergeant Rose being shot. Now the same man is seen running away after police say he shot Sergeant Rose. A gunman who, after two weeks, is still on the run. We are trying to catch a cop killer. I'll say it again. We're trying to catch a cop killer. Investigators came up with this video two days after Colin Rose was shot. Police say they didn't make the video public because they believed at the time they had the right person in custody, D'Angelo Davis. They say what the gunman in the video was wearing matched what D'Angelo Davis was wearing that night. But evidence led police to realize they had the wrong man. Charges against Davis were dropped and he was released. Does the chief have anything to say to D'Angelo Davis? There's not a lot to say. Uh, the only thing I will say is I stand firm that we made a legal arrest. We had probable cause to arrest. The prosecutor agreed. The prosecutor decided to charge. Police confirmed that DNA from the suspect was found at the scene. DNA that is not linked to someone with a prior felony conviction. There's also the possibility that the person on the bike could be a juvenile with no DNA on record. We're not at square one. Uh, we're not like starting from scratch. All right, back here live, we showed you the new video. Let's focus closely now on a bike that we have been showing you here. The bike that police believe the suspect was riding when he came in contact with Sergeant Rose right where we're standing. Also, a new twist in this, Kimberly and Devin, that Chief Craig said today that they believe that D'Angelo Davis also had contact with this very same bike. It's one of the reasons why uh, they believe investigators will go back and interview Davis again, this time as a witness. We're live on the West Side tonight. Sean Lay, Local 4. Yeah. All right, Sean. Well, we have some sad news to report as former astronaut and U.S. Senator John Glenn has passed away. A true American hero, Glenn will be uh, most remembered for being the first American to orbit Earth back in 1962. Of course, after his career as an astronaut, he also spent 24 years in the U.S. Senate. He died this afternoon in Columbus, Ohio at the age of 95. 
A former teacher is facing 30 felony counts for entering the charter school system's computer system. Prosecutors say she did it without permission and ended up deleting as many as 1,000 student files and records. Local 4's Guy Gordon joins us with more on how it was done. Police say it's the cyber equivalent of walking into a classroom and just upending everything, creating a lot of vandalism. The woman was a disgruntled employee who, when she left the school, for some reason, her username and password were not deactivated. Police say 36-year-old Christina Lee attacked the system at the Detroit Edison Public School Academy back in the fall of 2015. According to police, she deleted or manipulated a massive number of files and records, everything from attendance to academic performance for the 1,500 plus students in this K through 12 system. There were hundreds of uh, student records uh, that were deleted, uh, that were affected. Cyber cops from the Michigan State Police not only tagged the Lincoln Park woman's login to the alleged digital vandalism, but a forensic review of her own computer revealed damaging evidence as well. She faces 15 counts of unauthorized access to a computer network for 15 separate alleged attacks and also 15 counts of using a computer to commit a crime. School officials declined comment, but the system faced an expensive and arduous restoration process. A lot of uh, rebuilding um, attempts to retrieve um, backups to data uh, as well as a manual entry of, uh, of uh, student, student records. And it came at a hugely inconvenient time because the school system was in the middle of its fall headcount that determines their state aid and were not able to file that report in a timely manner. These are serious charges. Again, 30 felonies. She faces 2 to 10 years for many of those counts. We're live. I'm Guy Gordon, Local 4. Back to you. What a case. All right, Guy. A Detroit family pleading for justice in the murder of their loved one. We really want justice. So we could give his son some answers. Why they say someone knows who did it and needs to step forward. Doc? Cases of the flu are climbing. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. I'll show you where it's hitting and the other contagious illness that's making lots of people miserable this week. Lives are being changed at the Say Detroit Radiothon. Another deserving family gets a big surprise next. at six. Her car caught fire at that ATM. She was seconds away from being burned alive. You will hear from the heroes who rescued her. And a Macomb County woman with an emotional message as she is sentenced to prison for the death of her friend. Now to a holiday tradition I think anyone can get behind, and that is the changing of lives through giving. This is a great organization. Right now at Somerset Collection in Troy, a deserving family is about to get a very special surprise. Jamie Edmonds is live at Mitch Album's Say Detroit Radiothon, ready to bring us a memorable moment. Jamie. I've been saying it all day, Kimberly. This is the reason for the season. This is why Mitch Album does it. The money goes directly to the neediest in Detroit. So far, they've raised over $620,000 for Say Detroit. I'm joined here by Mitch Album. Now you have $628,000. you are trying to get to a million. You're here, here till nine. You think you can do it? Uh, I hope we can do it. Uh, you know, there's an awful lot of generous people here in the city of Detroit, and we got a lot of great guests and things coming up. But even if we don't do it, uh, what we're here to do is what we're about to do here right now. Leo Cook, who you see right here, is one of our veterans, uh, someone who served 12 years in the uh, armed services for our country, found himself in a hard time uh, without a home and uh, transitioning back into that life through the help of Detroit Rescue Mission Ministries. Well, it just so happens that if you look around here, uh, you may see something here. This is a home that the folks from Home Depot helped refurbish in Detroit. And uh, we are, as a result of the fact that you have served so well and you've got, uh, <laughs> hold on, you've got Regina and LaShawn with you, your daughters. You see this here? Yes, yes. Uh, it's a nice house, yes, isn't it? So beautiful, beautiful wonderful. You so Would you like to live in that house? Yes. Oh, yes, sir. Would you like to own that house? Yes. Well, I happen to have the keys to that house right here. And for your service and for what you've done, uh, we're going to... Uh, give you that house. Oh, you said you didn't want to be on TV and now you're crying. What do you say to that, sweetheart? Thank you. Aww. What does this mean to you guys? Oh, it means the world to me. Thank you, Detroit. Thank you, Home Depot. Thank you, everybody. 
Well, the chance to have someone who's served our country have a house through the efforts of our volunteers, through Home Depot, through Humble Design who helped decorate it, and through what we're doing here, say Detroit. This is what we do through our Working Homes, Working Families project. We don't just do it on Radiothon Day, we do it all year round, and that's where the money we're trying to raise here today at 855-955-GIVE goes to. So, guys, you can move in tomorrow. So I give you the Christmas keys. Christmas present for that family. They get to move into that house tomorrow. Those were happy tears. We've seen it twice before. Three homes have been given away. If you wanted to help, 855-955-GIVE. They're trying to get to a million dollars. Devin, Kimberly, I think they could do it. Yeah, they're well on their way. It's like the last year. The good news is you made a million dollars last year. The bad news is you made a million dollars last year. <laughs> that's and right. Now you've got, you got to top me. You want to top it. it. Yeah. yeah. Great start, though. Oh, I'm, I'm a little verklempt here, so I'm glad you get to talk. Now, that was a wonderful wonderful moment, wasn't it? Yeah, was just, just, just you know, speechless, though, especially yeah. the little girl yeah, there. Really, really yeah. touching. And the inside of that house looked very warm. Wasn't that beautiful? <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. is what you're going to need. And, for the, and moving in and right moving away. In for the holidays. <laughs> yes. And yes, because here comes the holiday with style weather. Huh? We've been talking so much about the snow, we're giving short shrift to the cold, which yeah, is yeah. really going to go uh, downhill. Uh, the temperatures are as we get into the next several days. These are current air temperatures. These aren't the wind chills. Uh, it is 27 on the thermometer right now in Detroit. In fact, all of the state pretty much is in the uh, 20s, except out here in Traverse City and Lettington, where they're at the 30s right now. When you start factoring in those winds, uh, we really haven't been out of the teens for wind chills all day today and likely won't uh, as we get into the next several days. In fact, it looks like our next chance of getting above freezing on the thermometer is probably going to be on Monday afternoon. So here's a look now at the clouds and radar, and we've been seeing a lot more snow on the west side of the state and the northern part of Lower Peninsula than what we've been seeing here in Detroit. It hadn't been a whole lot, but it's caused a lot of headaches and we're not completely done just yet. You can sort of see this little line here. Uh, we'll uh, connect it here with a uh, trough as that starts to sink to the south. It gets uh, further away from the lakes. It's going to lose some of that moisture, but we could see an increase in snow showers once we get into about eight, nine o'clock and you'll see it here as it falls apart, but still may be some snow showers left. Now, to be quite honest, the models did not handle uh, the snow showers that we got today very well, so I'm not putting a lot of faith in that solution, but nevertheless, tomorrow's probably going to be a carbon copy of today where we see snow showers mainly from the lake as those winds start coming out of the west again and then we'll dry out a little bit on Saturday get a break from the flakes and Saturday night going into Sunday that's when we bring the shovels out and we'll look at that here in your four zone forecast these are snow totals believe it or not Saturday night going into Sunday three to four inches is what we're expecting in our north zone south zone especially down here towards the state line you may see slightly lower numbers right around two inches in Lambertville and Blissfield and then those numbers get a little bit higher up here uh, towards Michigan Avenue almost four inches in Belleville west zone snows totals anywhere between four and possibly close to five inches here in Howell Brighton and Milford and we'll see similar numbers in our north zone, about uh, four, possibly close to five inches in a couple locations as we get into very early Sunday. And that is not it for the snow. We'll see another burst as we get into Sunday night and Monday. Tonight, though, 24 degrees, snow showers diminishing. We'll spend most of the nighttime hours dry. Tomorrow, we'll still get those lake effect snow showers, especially in the afternoon. As our high temperatures go to 30, it's still going to feel like the teens with those wind chills out there. And then that Saturday night snow going into early Sunday morning, we we get another burst Sunday night going into Monday. Still a lot of questions on the location of that. If we get the worst of it, we could be seeing another round of accumulation. <laughs> And then Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, we've got some flakes in there, but look at those numbers on Wednesday and Thursday morning, 15 in the morning, eight over a low temperature on Thursday. That's temperature, not a wind chill. I couldn't help notice there are flakes falling on every one of those days. Yeah, we <laughs> just sort of, sort of we just sort of rubber just stamped Welcome it to winter. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then thanks. All right, then. Love the bright lights, but you don't like the strings. Is Star Shower the answer? We're going to put it to the test. Does Star Shower really produce the holiday spectacle the TV commercial promises? It does make a lot of sparkles, but also comes with a warning you can't afford to ignore. Okay. All right, Steve, but first, brand new information just in after a Georgia police officer is shot and killed. We've got the latest in just a minute. The search for a killer in Georgia is over today after police say the suspect in the fatal shooting of a police officer was found dead inside of a home. Police have been searching for Minquell's Limbrick for 27 hours after he allegedly shot two police officers in America's Georgia yesterday morning. And today, an anonymous caller called in a tip about Limbrick's whereabouts. An hour later, 
They found his body inside a local home. When the SWAT team, SWAT team made entry, uh, they found one suspect inside who was deceased from what appeared to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Uh, the suspect has been positively identified as Mr. Limbrick. 25-year-old officer Ryan Smarr was killed in the attack. The other officer, 26-year-old Jody Smith, is still in critical condition. The Detroit plant branch of the NAACP held a news conference today to speak out against a set of bills passed by the House that they feel are designed to reduce the amount of votes cast by people of color. According to the NAACP, the House is using voter fraud as an excuse to get these bills passed. Reverend the issue of voter fraud has been debunked, diffused, and the very idea is simply dissed by the facts of the matter. A new poll will require a photo ID to vote on Election Day. The NAACP feels the law not only attacks people of color, but also those citizens that are stuck in poverty. New at 530. Cases of the flu are climbing. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge. I'll show you where it's hitting and the other contagious illness that's making lots of people miserable this week. See what's going around coming up. Clues among the ashes, devastating new details in that deadly warehouse fire in California. And now it's what didn't happen in more than 30 years. It may have played a role in the tragedy. A young Detroit father was shot and killed outside this restaurant on the west side while protecting his three female friends. And we'll tell you why this crime is doubly troubling to his grieving mother. He was uh, 25 too, and he had a heart attack. And then a year later, that's where he took my son. Coming up, we'll join the family in their search for justice. It's dinner time. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5.30 starts now. A family desperate for answers. Their plea tonight as the people who gunned down their loved one remain on the loose one year later. The family of Angelo Goforth has a simple plea tonight, and that is to speak up. Goforth was shot and killed in November of last year outside the Sweet Soul Bistro on McNichols in Detroit. But since that night, no arrests. Priya Mann spoke with the family. And Priya, it's been a, a devastating stretch for them, no doubt. Well, you know, we spoke with the mother. She has had to bury both of her children, both sons dead at 25 years old. They died within a year of one another, the first to a heart attack, the other to a violent robbery that is still unsolved. Yolanda Billingsley says the hardest part about losing her son is trying to explain his murder to her four-year-old grandson. He wants to know what happened and why it happened, and I just can't give him any answers right now. Angelo Goforth was shot and killed last November as he left Sweet Soul Bistro near West McNichols and Schaefer. The 25-year-old was walking three women to their car around 1.30 in the morning. Out of nowhere, a gunman appeared and forced them to lie on the ground. After robbing them, the man then tried to shoot, but his gun jammed. That's when Angelo jumped up and tried to wrestle with the gunman. He was shot four times just across the road from Sinai Grace Hospital. The young man died trying to protect his friends. Angelo was like our protector. Um, he was everyone's protector. This was the pocket-sized Bible Angelo was carrying the night he was killed. You killed a child of God. This mother says at times the grief of losing both her children is overwhelming. I just continue to have faith in the Lord to help me get through this. She can't answer Angelo Jr.'s questions yet, but says she's praying her son's killer will be brought to justice. I tell him he's up in heaven with God and, uh, and he watches over him every day. And the family is urging anyone with information to come forward. Crime Stoppers is offering a $2,500 reward for information that leads to a conviction. If that information comes in by this evening, they're adding another $1,000 to that reward. And of course, those calls are anonymous. Reporting live from DPD headquarters, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. And as we often point out, Priya, you may not think your tip means much, but police uh, may uh, beg to differ. So call in whatever information you might have. All right, Priya. We continue to follow breaking news tonight from Livingston County, where three people were killed in a pileup crash on I-96. It happened in the 9 o'clock hour this morning near Fowlerville. 
Police blame the changing weather conditions as well as road conditions. They said black ice caused dozens of vehicles, including semis, to slide into one another. Right now, eastbound I-96 remains closed as crews work to clear up that mess. And it has been a mess, but now that I'm standing here with Ben looking at the radar, I'm glad we're not on the west side of the state. It's just coming down in buckets, it looks like. Yeah, I, I mean, when you see this on 4 Live Radar, in fact, let's show it to you. It is just uh, amazing over there. Coming in off the lake, we were so focused on 94 uh, being a problem over there between Kalamazoo and Battle Creek uh, last night. It looks like, obviously, with what was going on here in 96, that we're seeing more of an impact a little bit further north, uh, just off to the uh, east of, or west of Grand Rapids, rather. Rather, and it is still coming. That lake effect snow machine is still going over here. Uh, we're almost completely done with the snow, at least for the time being. Everything's drying up pretty quickly, but we are keeping our eyes up to the north where we've got more of these streamers coming in off the northern end of Lake Michigan, sort of connecting back to Lake Superior. Some of this will survive to the south, uh, but a lot of it will start to dry out. So we're going to see another push of some snow as we get towards eight, nine o'clock. But with temperatures in the 20s, everything that's out there for those untreated roads probably is going to be a mess tonight. And Kim DeGiulio's got more on that. Where are the headache spots right now, Kim? Oh, yeah. Well, right now we're looking at northbound I-75 at Schaefer. Take a look at this. These cars currently at a standstill. But the crazy thing is, is there's actually not an accident ahead of this that is causing all of that traffic. There was a closure earlier, so those are still clearing up. But there is an accident just before this over in Southgate. This is northbound I-75 right at North Lane. The right shoulder is blocked there, but I-75 is not the place you want to be right now. So obviously, if you are on it, you can exit at Eureka and then take that to Ford Street to avoid those backups. And also, we have another accident we want to let you know about. This is over on M5. It is northbound M5 right at 12 mile. The right shoulder is blocked there. Be careful because of these icy conditions out there. Back to you. We a mess out there, Kim. Thank you. A bicyclist has died after being hit by a Detroit police officer. This happened last night around 11 o'clock near Oakland and Davison in Highland Park. Police said the officer was traveling northbound on Oakland with his sirens on when he struck a man in his 20s on a bike, and that man later died from his injuries. Michigan State Police continue to investigate. Officials in Oakland, California are now under fire as the investigation into the warehouse fire that killed 36 people continues. New information reveals no city building code enforcer got around to inspecting the inside of the ghost ship warehouse. The building was converted into a home for dozens of artists. Questions are now being raised, though, about how the city inspections department failed to examine the commercial building. In response, Oakland's interim planning and building director says the inspectors would have only entered the warehouse if someone applied for building permits, but no one ever did. Scott Pruitt, not exactly a household name, but the Oklahoma Attorney General is Donald Trump's pick to head the Environmental Protection Agency. And as Trump himself said, global warming is a hoax on the campaign trail. The pick is drawing uh, plenty of criticism. Steve Handel has been following for us from Washington. Steve? Devin Pruitt needs Senate confirmation here on Capitol Hill, and Democrats are vowing not to allow him, in their words, to bring EPA to its knees. Most Republicans love Donald Trump putting Scott Pruitt at the EPA to roll back efforts to fight climate change. But Trump faces a fight with Democrats over Pruitt. He's going to try to turn the EPA uh, into standing for every polluter's ally. As Oklahoma Attorney General Pruitt sued EPA, supporting oil companies. In a Trump transition release today, Pruitt said, the American people are tired of seeing billions of dollars drained from our economy due to unnecessary EPA regulations. Trump today reportedly tapped for Labor Secretary Andy Puzder, a fast food CEO who opposes minimum wage hikes. Puzder, Pruitt, Obamacare opponent Tom Price going to HHS, school voucher backer Betsy DeVos as Education Secretary. Democrats charge that Trump team has one mission. To dismantle and undermine and destroy the very agencies that they are now hoping to run. Meanwhile, Trump, who claimed he saved 1,100 jobs at Carrier in Indiana, blasted a union leader there who says it's just 730. Chuck Jones, Trump tweeted, has done a terrible job. Carrier says 800 jobs were saved, that 300 were set to stay in the U.S. No, I don't regret or uh, change anything that I said. Sounding like Trump, who by his EPA and other cabinet picks, is sticking by his pledge to shake up government.
Democrats pledging to keep Scott Pruitt from heading the EPA say they may try to force every Senate Republican to declare publicly if they believe in global warming. From Capitol Hill, Steve Handelsman, Local 4. All right, Steve, one other uh, interesting morsel from today. There's another familiar name floating around when it comes to picks for the Trump administration. Former Ford CEO Alan Mulally said to be in the mix after meeting with the president-elect. Uh, since leaving Ford, Mulally now sits on the board at Google. No word yet on what position uh, he is perhaps being considered for, but oh, stay tuned. Interesting, yeah. Uh, good health now. The flu is increasing. Also, uh, another contagious illness making the rounds, uh, making a lot of people miserable this week. Our Dr. Frank McGeorge is here to show us what's going around. This is right on cue. Cases of the flu are really starting to pick up, and stomach viruses are also on the rise in a lot of communities, spreading through families, schools, and workplaces. Here's what's going around where you live. In Wayne County, Beaumont Gross Point reports lots of viral upper respiratory infections and strep throat. Henry Ford Taylor is seeing stomach viruses, Children's Hospital is treating kids with croup and asthma flare-ups, and Beaumont, Trenton, and Canton are both seeing an increase in falls this week. Moving to Oakland County, CVS Minute Clinic reports new cases of whooping cough in Milford and South Lyon. So, be sure your pertussis vaccinations are up to date. Dr. Steve McGraw at Providence is treating lots of flu, especially influenza B. Beaumont Royal Oak is seeing stomach viruses and strep throat, and Clarkston Medical Group is treating mono. Looking at Washtenaw County, confirmed cases of influenza are popping up there, along with the first flu-related hospitalization. Doctors at U of M are seeing an increase in vomiting and diarrhea from stomach viruses in children and adults. Respiratory illnesses, mono, and strep throat also make the list. Heading to Monroe County, Dr. Anthony Songo is seeing flu and upper respiratory infections. ProMedica Monroe Regional is treating coughs and stomach viruses. Finally, in Macomb County, Dr. Michael Mattingly is seeing several confirmed cases of flu at McLaren Macomb, along with bronchitis and RSV. Falls from hanging up holiday decorations continue as well, and Henry Ford Macomb reports asthma flare-ups and strep throat. Now, if you have not had a flu shot yet, get one right away. It's your best defense against influenza. Also, you need to be extra vigilant about hand washing to keep those stomach viruses from spreading. Back to you. All right, we, it's, we, it's going, something's going around this building, we know that. A lot right? of people out, yeah. you're right. <laughs> uh, experts are calling it zesty, refreshing, and rejuvenating. And believe it or not, we're not talking about a new soft drink Whoa. here. It is the official color of 2016. Who knew this was even a thing? We'll show it to you ahead here at 5. Also, this nuclear plant on the west side of the state has had issues for decades. New tonight, the major decision that could be a huge hit for hundreds of people. Steve. For many families who celebrate Christmas, this is the season to decorate the house. You love the bright lights, but you don't like the strings. Is Star Shower the answer? We're going to put it to the test. On Jeopardy! New at 6. A young father wakes up to see a Molotov cocktail coming right through his front window. I heard a boom. Heard a boom. I jump out of my sleep, go look. Tonight, he is sharing his story with Local 4 on how he was able to get out alive. You may remember a horrific crash on I-94 near Metro Parkway in March of this year. A young 21-year-old with a daughter was killed. Today in court, her very close friend and defendant was sentenced. I'm so very sorry. <laughs> the very direct messages that both the victim's family and the defendant's family had for each other. All right, Nick. Oh, it's a must have holiday decoration this season. The star shower claims to not only look really cool, but also take away all the hard work of stringing up all those outdoor lights. Sounds great. But does this laser light show really live up to all the hype? Steve Garagiola puts the star shower to the test and has one important warning about it. For many families, this is Christmas season and you love the fun and the spectacle of lots of lights on the house, but you don't want to mess with strings of lights. That's no fun. Star Shower promises to be your answer. We're going to put it to the test. Introducing Star Shower Laser Lights, the easiest way to decorate your entire home. Just In the TV commercial, it looks great. They offer two versions, static lights and motion lights. Dan Sullivan says his family used the static version last year. It lit up pretty much the whole house with just one. And you get background trees and stuff will also get lit up at the same time. The Sullivans live on a very dark street, which really helps. With other lights on, the star shower can get washed out. The light that's on over at the house is probably canceling a lot of the light over here. The effect of the laser beams was even better when shining onto the large trees in the Sullivans' front yard. 
But that can create a problem nobody counted on. This is an aircraft unauthorized laser event. Laser strikes on airplanes have become common. But the FAA says last year there were a half dozen incidents caused by the star shower. One of them involved a Coast Guard pilot. You have flash blindness, which is exactly what it sounds like, and it can cause anything from a mild distraction to a complete incapacitation of the pilot, resulting in the aircraft crashing. There's a warning right on the box that star shower should not be pointed within the flight path of an aircraft within 10 nautical miles of an airport. So be careful where you point it. Airline safety issues aside, what's the verdict from the Sullivan family? So you would give it a thumbs up? I would give it a thumbs up. I just don't really like the motion. I feel like the standard's brighter. I saw it was cool. <laughs> Star shower motion costs about $50. Yeah. My testers say it's worth the investment. I'm Steve Garagiola, Local 4.